Good afternoon, guys and gals. Welcome back to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. This is day two of our continuing coverage of UiPath Forward 6, live from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We've had a lot of great conversations the last day and a half, but you know, because you've been watching. I love talking about customers and really seeing the value of the technology in play. We're going to be doing that next. We've got two guests. Maxim Iofi is here, Global Intelligent Automation Leader at Wesco, and Emran Aziz joins as well, Director of Product Management at UiPath. Great to have you both on theCUBE, thank you for joining us. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Max, go ahead and give the audience just an understanding of Wesco, what type of company is it, what do you guys do, how do you help customers? Yeah, well, Wesco is a Fortune 500 company, we are 180 on a list, about um, 21 billion dollars in sales. We are on a mission to build, power, connect, and protect the world and we have about 20,000 employees partnering with, give or take 50,000 suppliers, hundreds of thousands of customers, transacting millions of unique items each year. So it's a large scale, it's also an older company, it's 100 years old to be exact. So we are a legacy company that tries to do a lot of modern stuff. That's challenging from a cultural perspective. The legacy companies that are really trying to transform, use automation, I know you guys use Clipboard AI. Give us more, kind of a, a detail on your use case with UiPath, and then we want to get into autopilot with you, Emron. Well, our use case with UiPath is all about automating the unique solutions that our customers, our suppliers, our partners require in order to uh, succeed in their, their jobs. So it's not so much of a traditional, here's a huge process that is very unified, done the same way all the time. It's more about how can we help customer A, how can we help customer B, very, similar but different process and that's by design and we cannot drive the standardization. With that, we can benefit from a very nimble, very quick um, animation development program and this is one of the things that excite us about UiPath and drove us to the solution. But we also have a lot of different document types and this is where Clipboard AI can be really instrumental for us to take those documents and convert them to something digital that we can do something with. Imran, give us a little bit of an overview. Autopilot, breaking news, just yes. announced. <laughs> Tell the audience about that, what that is, when, what's game changing about it? Uh, it's super exciting. Uh, Autopilot is our suite of capabilities where we introduce Gen AI into our product line. So all the way from developers to end users uh, can now use the step up capabilities uh, Gen AI provides. Uh, so today, I think you saw Graham and Daniel's keynote where we announced uh, Autopilot for end users. So in addition to being able to chat and get answers to your questions within the company's context, you can also do actions now. And actions can range from uh, you know, helping you with travel, booking tickets, uh, doing exp hotel expenses within Concur, uh, to all the way to summarizing your customer requests, and then being able to transfer documents from one place to the other. Similar to what Max did with Clipboard AI, we're going to be able to take that scenario, but a lot of additional scenarios in an interactive chat experience. So the demo we saw today, you had, it was basically, you went from different docs, unstructured doc, there was a passport, there was a, I, I guess there was a, a hotel itinerary that was in the kanji characters. That's right. That it interpreted, and it basically said, it was a kind of a joke, I don't know if it was Graham or whomever, so, Daniel, read that, it's in Japanese, and I don't read Japanese, <laughs> uh, wise guy. And so, but so then the system did, said, oh, you're staying at the, you know, this hotel, the new Otani, or whatever it was. It wasn't the new Otani, but it's, it's in my head. At any rate, and then I would like an itinerary, book me a, a, another joke, business class seat, Daniel joked, 10 years ago, no business class, and um, they're taking action. So how does that work, that you go from docs to data to mapping yeah. to action? Yeah, a super uh, key point there. Uh, so, as you know, business workers or information workers, they work in context of their apps, of so web mm -hmm. browsing, Outlook, Slack. So what we wanted to make Autopilot capable of is transferring any context inside it. So when Graham took that screenshot of that Japanese site, what it did is it captured that and then transferred the context into Autopilot. So tra translation of Japanese to English was done then it, uh, with the AI models, it can recognize that because of the context within the, uh, the website, what's the task the business user's trying to accomplish? And then with the helpful hints that Graham was giving, like, you know, can you help me with travel? Along with the context the document brings in, the AI does the work for you. So that's, that's where autopilot, and it's human in the loop is important with what Graham showed because 
one of the things we strongly believe in is that humans make AI more powerful. So it's, it's a great tool, it helps assist you, uh, gives you capabilities that you didn't have before, but you take it to the next level yourself. Yeah. Well, too, especially when AI is hallucinating, it's good to have a human there to make yeah. sure this. <laughs> <laughs> Today, we didn't see any hallucinations, but when I do the demo once in a while, once in a blue moon, you'll see it, yeah. I know that with the Cube AI, <laughs> and it's our data, every now and then it like makes stuff up, and you go, okay, you need to tell the system, hey, yeah. tighten that up, and, and it does. Yeah. Max, how are you using this capability, or do you envision using it? Yeah, our, our, our use case is all around the simple documents. We're in the distribution business. Distribution industry is full of documents, and if you think about 50,000 suppliers, hundreds of thousands of customers, multiplied by 10, that's how many formats we get of each purchase order, each receipt, each docu bill of lading, whatever the document happened to be. They're not that big, it's typically a handful of items, but rekeying it from one place to another could take three minutes, five minutes, what have you, and if we can just use clipboard AI and as Imran described the technology, for us it's as simple as hit the copy button, hit the paste button. It usually takes about 30 seconds. If it works, that's amazing, you save three minutes. If it doesn't, well, you lost 30 seconds, not a big deal. So it's the human in the loop where the commitment from human is minimal, and the beauty of it is, from my COE perspective, we didn't build anything, we just installed an application on the user's computer. So we didn't invest heavily into building, testing, development, and all the other stuff that could get quite expensive and challenging. So uh, we heard from Eric Brynjolfsson today. I don't know if you guys saw that in the keynote. Yeah, wonderful I was, talk. I, I was blown away. He, he's great. He, Cube alum, by the way, fantastic. Second machine age, read the book if you haven't. I mean, it was, even though it's old now, it's, it was very prescient. But at any rate, he was saying 3% productivity improvement, and he'd be disappointed if it's not higher. He thinks we could double productivity, go over 4%, that would be amazing. Bobby Patrick talked about, I think it was Deloitte, um, AI would impact, I don't know how he said it, 10% of the workforce. I mean, by the end of the day, you, you're basically paying less for labor costs. I mean, that's what it's about in, in business. I'm either going to raise revenue or I'm going to cut costs. Most of my costs are on labor. So, how do you translate these um, productivity gains into the income statement. What are you seeing, Max, in terms of reality? You're not firing people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, wholesale firing people. Maybe through attrition, you don't have to hire as much. Maybe if you can't find talent, you can use AI to plug the holes. But how does it actually manifest itself to business? No, that, that, that's a fair question. And you kind of have an interesting environment where Rob started the conference talking about four day work week and all that <laughs> other exciting stuff. That's lovely, but you see workers who are paying overtime doing a lot of this manual labor. And that stays in a way of not just efficiency, but also effectiveness of the operation. What else can we offer to our customer? It could be a new billable service. It could be value added. It could be something we provide that they just cannot get without using our services. That's where we see a lot of failure. If we can free up the workers from retyping from point A to point B, copy, paste, copy, paste, retype, and give them those couple of seconds back, those seconds add up to doing yep. something meaningful to the customer, or give us an ability to go to the customer and say, look, in addition to what we've do, do, been doing to you before, we can do a little bit more for you. That's where we see the things. It's not just efficiency, it's more about effectiveness and it's more about unlocking the new potentials. I mean, this four-day work week's interesting. You know, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta ask you what you guys think about that, because I think what's going to happen is you're going to get, you're going to be able to get six days in, in four, and then people are going to be, oh, well, I'll get seven days in five, and that's just going to happen, because we're competitive. <laughs> that's, you know, I mean, it's all, I mean, this is America. <laughs> so, yeah. I can see maybe in some countries that'll play, and, and maybe that'll serve them well. They'll live longer and have a better life, work life balance, but. I think one thing that pops out to me, other than the efficiency part, is job satisfaction. Yeah. So when I come into work, there's 30% of things that I wish I didn't have to do, and if as the autopilot can do those things, I feel more empowered and I feel happier at work. So I think that, yeah. combined with like removing bottlenecks for customers to be able to do more, is where AI can empower us more. Which yeah. you know, that's yeah. a really good point because if, if you know that's a it's a complicated algorithm to sit here and the gut yeah. feel it because. If in fact you can retain people longer, have lower yeah. turnover, that translates into you know, the, the better business, no question. Um, 
and to an extent the lines between work work and life getting more and more blurred work from home am i working am i staying with staying at the dinner table i don't know maybe right. a little bit of both right so for a work week well maybe maybe not but if we can helping people to do stuff they love and take them out of the stuff that nobody particularly enjoy, take the robot out of the human as opposite to making the human do the work that robot can do, yeah. that could be I beneficial. Mean, I, I, we, we all check emails on weekends, not all, but many if not most <laughs> do, and you know, so many of the emails are a waste of time. Mm -hmm. you know, so the AI hopefully can help solve that problem. Like, what do I really need to worry about in the weekend? Because you know, <laughs> the reality is there's between zero and maybe two things that you actually have to worry about. Yeah. You know. yeah. And maybe I, on I, top of that, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say that the hotel receipt scenario was an actual scenario that happened to me at my last conference because I forgot about submitting expenses <laughs> till the last minute. So, you know, this whole thing that a receipt comes to your inbox and it detects it, and then you can easily take that and submit your expenses. A lot of us go through that, especially, I'm sure, you guys as you travel. Yeah, we need that. These, <laughs> yeah. these poor guys are on the road the whole time, and it's yeah. like, we have, and we have a guy who's like the, the he's the receipt Nazi, and, uh, <laughs> and he's like, 90 days so you don't get paid, you know, these yeah. guys are, you know, 89 days in there. <laughs> yeah. The job in. satisfaction point that you bring up is incredibly valid because it translates directly to that your, custom, your customer's experience, right? If your team is empowered, Absolutely. you're taking mundane tasks off their plate, they're able to focus more on value add, they're delivering better, the business is doing better, as Dave was pointing out, but the, your end customer experience is also positively yeah. impacted. Absolutely, and there is another part of it where you maybe just remove a task that everybody used to do. Why do you need to collect the receipt? It goes to your inbox, you get automatically scanned, it automatically attaches to your expense report, things get done, you don't get that nagging about doing the expense report, all of a sudden you feel a little bit more liberated from it and hopefully feel it is something more creative and productive than matching the receipt to a transaction and remembering why the heck did you do that. What's been some of the feedback, anecdotally, Max, from your business users on what you've been able to achieve so far with the UiPath partnership? Uh, uh, there is a lot of satisfaction in the fact that, hey, I don't have to do copy-paste and that's coming from the users. The other feedback that we see, generally speaking, when I ask around, not just within my organization, but across the board, hey, what do you use to do this kind of task today? You often find out that people just go online, find a tool that does the job, and use it. What kind of tool is it? Well, it's some sort of a freeware. We just found it online, and we uploaded our pricing contract to it. <laughs> Wait a second, is that what we want to do? So in addition to everything we talked about, there is also a layer of extra security and safety that we can bring into our organization by using the package solution that we can trust that does things better or the same, but at least we know where the data goes so we, we have control about it. Yeah. And you, UiPath brings that privacy, that security, or you guys, what's the shared responsibility there, I guess is my question. Uh, it, I think a lot of that is to be determined still, right? Uh, the things are evolving quickly about privacy and security and what are the models underneath are the different solutions, but at the end of the day, I would rather have one vendors where I can get it all figured out than having a lot of vendors and having a lot of software, freeware, whatever, shareware, that I have no idea where it came from, right? Yeah, and, and what is the scope, I'm sorry, Lisa. That's okay. <laughs> What's the scope of, of your use of of these tools, I mean, is it a whole organization, 10% of the organization, can you quantify that? Well, right now, right now the software is still in private preview, so we're just experimenting and testing it. Looking forward a year from now, yeah, or whenever it becomes it yeah. public, I can envision this kind of tool being available to everybody. Mm -hmm. If the pricing model allows for it, we were ch chatting about it just before going on stage, we want to make sure that it makes financial sense for the organization, but as long as it does, it could become a general use tool, much like you hit Control C, Control V to copy from email to Word or vice versa. Yeah. Imran, when is the tool going to be generally available, and what's been some of the feedback that you've gotten in the last 24 hours? I mean, the feedback's been phenomenal. It's especially today when we announced Autopilot for Assistant, you know, as I was walking out, some partners and customers talking about how they don't need to now necessarily just build the automations themselves, so they're excited about that. Uh, discoverability, COE is excited about 
people being able to discover these automations and then without being told what to do, they can sort of figure that out themselves. So it sort of frees the internal IT up a little bit. Uh, on the other side, you know, I am getting concerns about governance and privacy, which we're going to acknowledge, and I think Graham mentioned that, that is a key aspect of what we do, trustworthiness. Uh, but yeah, feedback's really been really positive. I can't talk about the general availability yet, <laughs> but uh, we are working on it, and I'll announce the dates. Um, and and that's because you don't know, correct? Uh, or, uh, or, or you know and you can't say? Or? Oh, we, yeah, we are, I know as far as what the product velocity is, but you know, yeah, it, there's a lot of other teams involved before we can publish the dates. Yeah, yeah. So and yeah, I think it's it's more a matter of when we can announce it. You got to make sure everybody's lined up, and yeah. and you get that. Make, yeah. Making sure you're not missing anything. Product quality, and you know, working with people like Max, it's been invaluable. Like we we talked about clipboard AI and a problem he ran into, and. On the same meeting, I think we pretty much solved that particular problem, and then I gave the feedback to the product team, they're going to solve it for all other customers too. So I think that kind of loop is something we want to do, and make sure we incorporate that feedback and make the product more robust. Yeah. I, mean, that's, I think yeah. that's generally accepted these days with, yeah. with software. You know. yeah. Cube AI's in private beta, by the way. <laughs> go to, go to thecubeai.com and sign up. <laughs> Yeah, but one of the things we see is a lot of collaboration with UiPath, working with Imran, working with other folks on the product team, allows us to quickly bring the questions or problems to them and get the answer, right? So it benefits everybody, this product gets more robust, our use cases get figured out. It's extremely fruitful collaboration. Imran, last question for you. Yep. If there's anything you can share crystal ball wise <laughs> about what's coming out, what would it be? Keep uh, in, folks excited. In terms of autopilot. Yeah. So what you saw today was a sniff of the scenarios that are possible. Uh, you noticed that there were six things listed and Graham focused on travel, customer, and then digital paperwork. But there's other capabilities where autopilot can help you with your day-to-day -day tasks and learn what you're doing as well. Uh, and help coworkers. So that that kind of stuff, just leave you a teaser, is going to come next. Is uh, what are the other capabilities, marketing, sales, organizations can do to 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 leverage all of that. Other yeah. key use cases yeah. in development. Emron, yeah. Max, thank you so much for joining yeah. David and me on the program, and talking about really what Wesco and UiPath are doing together, and what it's enabling and empowering your organization to do, and you guys to deliver to your customers. We appreciate your insights, and we'll be keeping our eyes on Autopilot. Yeah, thanks, Thank guys. you so much, Thank really you. wonderful. Our pleasure. Thank you. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from UiPath. This is our second day of coverage. We're going to be back with our next guest in just a minute, so stick around. Mm -hmm.